Welcome to the Going North Podcast, where you will be informed, encouraged, and empowered to embrace your dreams and advance in life through authorship. I'm your host, best-selling author of the book, Stay the Course, and certified leadership trainer, Don Brightman. Be sure to check out the goods and services from every guest, as well as the host himself, yours truly. Now let the fun begin. And today on the Going North podcast, we're bringing some fabulous humans from across the globe. Today is no different. Today is no different. Echo my kid. Today is a different day because we got a different author's face in the virtual place because my goodness, a fiction science fiction author, folks, and an editor as well as a tech journalist. My goodness. And that's not even all of it. Like this woman's probably like one of those ultra professional wrestlers who's won like multiple belts because she's an award winning oh. author who's also well-traveled because she was raised in Northern Indiana and she spent time in South Bend, Mexico City, as well as Bloomington and Baltimore. And she even actually did some studies at Johns Hopkins. So my goodness. And on top of that, she's not only won awards, she was also the president of, if I'm not mistaken, the Science Fiction fantasy authors guild if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken I'm pro- she'll probably correct me on that <laughs> later because that's not my realm of expertise but we have someone who is an expert in the realm of sci-fi so let's give it up for miss cr herself the wonderful cat rambo how you feeling today cat i'm feeling awesome dom how are you doing uh doing well indeed even without the extra water it stopped raining so uh yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, but yes, indeed. Welcome into the danger zone. That's Thank right. you. Should I should I have brought armor? Should I be worried? Are there going to be dangers flying around us? I mean, they fly around, but usually okay. in mind, so you'll be all right. All right, all right. Yeah. So don't worry. Not every guest falls into the trap door. Knows the tree joke. It's okay. okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, as you know, introductions aren't allowed to be 57 days long, so mind filling in any cavities I missed about the wonderful cat herself? I, I don't know. I'll, oh, it was Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America uh, is, is the, the last part of that. I don't know. I won an award, as you said, for, and I'm going to, I'm, oh, I know. I've got a book that just came out called And the Last Trump Shall Sound uh, with... <laughs> I co-wrote with Harry Turtle Dove and James Morrow. It is an alternative future. I hope it's alternative. Uh, <laughs> and it's very bizarre because the three of us are very different writers. So it's an interesting book just because basically they wrote the first two parts and then they handed it to me. And I, I was like, oh my God, how do I do something that, cause they're like, no, seriously. Cause like Harry, I get, I read Harry's part and it's this very thoughtful historical research and these quotes from Marcus Aurelius and there's all this politics and the West Coast is splitting off from the, the rest of America and they forming Pacifica in their own nation. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I read James Morrow's and James Morrow has a spy from Pacifica who is going to go infiltrate the American government and persuade Mike Pence to do increasingly bizarre things, ending up with a performance with an animatronic Trump in Washington Cathedral. And then somehow I had to follow with a third act that somehow managed to make those two make sense together. So that was wow. that. <laughs> Maybe more than you wanted to know. <laughs> Oh man, that's an interesting cover, and I did not see that one coming. My goodness, oh, that was definitely left field. My goodness, is that your first ever book that you've done like that? Where it's because there's co author books like, well, not well, like that period, but like never from that sort of view where you actually take a story that's been built up brick by brick and you got to finish everything and put the roof on top and had the doors and the electricity and everything. So how, how has that process been? That was, that was fun. Uh, it was kind of 
worrisome because they're both very illustrious writers. And so I felt like I had to kind of make sure that I rose to that level. You know, honestly, I walked around for about a week and trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I was, and I was just like, screw it. I'm going to write the piece that I want to write and we'll see what happens. And, and that's, that's what I did. And mine's much more like a episode of Black Mirror or something like that. Uh, it's very dystopian, full of surveillance drones. Uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Although <laughs> the drones are already here. Let's just they hope are. they don't grow too much. <laughs> Uh, we don't want to say, oh, you're a big boy now. Look at your gun and your, oh, your gun. Oh, darn. I'm, 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 I'm peaceful. <laughs> don't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Nice drone. Nice drone. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So how did that, how did that even come about where you, the three of you decided to create a book like that? It, it actually was the publisher's idea. Uh, he, it's Shahid Mahmood of Ark Manor is actually uh, he's a fairly kind of conservative Republican leaning guy. And he was so distressed about the way things were going uh, that he wanted to uh, do a political book where uh, hopefully some middle ground got achieved or, or where we, I'm not even sure exactly what we were supposed to be doing. We just <laughs> sort of had fun with it as much as anything. <laughs> But I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff. There's a lot of kind of comic stuff and particularly in James's, but it also, it was pretty serious in that we, we were and still are worried that uh, if things continue as they've been going, that the world will just get just worse and worse. And so that was what we wanted to write about and hopefully, hopefully make people think as we were doing it and entertain and not be one of those sort of like horrible dry, think about this sort of books. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Nineteen eighty four still sells to this day. I think we it don't need anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, timely stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> so many years ago, but my goodness. So was how was the communication with it too? Were there any like arguments or anything with it? No, I, I think probably because I was so intimidated by them, I wasn't going to argue, but. Uh, no, they they gave me reasonable stuff, and and they weren't. There wasn't a lot of uh, back and forthing because since we're writing at different periods in time, right? So Harry's writing the first chunk, and then the James is like, "Well, this is what happens next," and then I was like, "So they had no say basically in what I decided happened next." Well, okay, well, that's beautiful. My goodness, yeah, yeah, like. That is a true co-author project right there. <laughs> like that is really a true co-author project because you're taking pieces of someone else's art. It's like, all right, you have the baton now. Get to the yeah. finish line, cat. Come on. Use the cat like quickness you have. That's Use it. It. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> exactly. It's like no pressure. Like one of the biggest lies on earth. Like all the pressure, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. Oh my goodness. And the beautiful thing about it is not only you write books, you're actually a professor too. You actually had a background in actual teaching that you actually do solo now, which is great because sometimes folks at the universities, they don't pay as well as they should. That is actually exactly why I started teaching online. Uh, I had been teaching a class on writing fantasy and science fiction for a college over here in Seattle. And I looked at my pay stub and then I looked at uh, one of the brochures that detailed how much they were charging for the class I was teaching and I thought wow that's really kind of screwily imbalanced and so I started teaching online because I also had a lot of people that were coming and asking uh, how they could take a workshop with me even if they weren't in the same place and Google had just introduced Google Hangouts uh, so I started doing a class on there and it, that was 10 years ago. Now the school, we have over a couple dozen different faculty members. Uh, a lot of different uh, science fiction and fantasy writers have come to teach for me and still are. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I think I write well is that I've been taking classes from these other people for about 10 years by listening to them teach. So, yeah. 
the Rambo uh, Academy for Wayward Writers. Ah, uh, yeah, because writing, it's a wayward game. That's it, it is. <laughs> And the beautiful thing about it is not only the past decade been feasting on other knowledge, it's apparently in the family because if I'm not mistaken, your grandmother was a writer too, right? She was. She wrote young adult sports novels and she did so under H.D. Uh, Francis because uh, there were sports novels and they felt that boys would not buy uh, sports novels by uh, a woman, but she was married to a football and track coach. So she had some knowledge uh, but so she wrote such books as Basketball Bones and Football Flash and Martha Norton Operation Fitness USA, which is my favorite of the titles because <laughs> it's so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sounds like the good awkward, like my goodness. So any other writers in the family, like the mom or the dad? Or Actually, my brother, Lowell Francis, uh, writes comic books and has written, he wrote uh, an episode of The Rocketeer, an issue of The Rocketeer, and uh, wrote one of those Superman reboot uh, comics. And I should remember the exact name, but they rebooted Superman so many times that I, it's hard to remember. Uh, but he's, yeah, and he writes uh, games as well. So he and I both write. My mother would like to write. She keeps telling us she's going to write a romance novel and, and then doesn't. So we keep waiting. But, you know, <laughs> the thing is, do you want your mother writing a romance novel? Or, or rather, do you want to read a romance novel? Particularly today's romances can get kind of smutty, as you know. Uh, so this may be just as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a visual. It's like, yay, I'm an editor. Oh, All righty, wow. mom, here's the family discount for the, oh, oh never mind. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> take it back, take it back. Oh, no. <laughs> my eyes, my eyes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I guess it's so true, though. Oh, man, but that's awesome, though. The whole family's got the talent going on, a generation of writers, multi-generation of writers. Yes, indeed. Heck, and not well, metaphorical and lefters. I am married to a software developer, but he has also produced one and a half science fiction stories in that he wrote one that was published and then uh, we wrote one together that actually appeared this year in Dark Matter magazine. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it does run in a family. It does. <laughs> Words all the time. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's what I'm talking about. My goodness, that's what I'm talking about indeed. So with all of this wonderful stuff, like really, what's probably, what was the thing that really got you started? Was it reading some of your grandmother's material and just deciding, hey, I'm going to start writing novels and sci-fi of all genres? Like what inspired you to really choose like fantasy and just go with that? It was because I had a babysitter when I was very little who read J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit to me. And she got me so hooked on it that I did a terrible thing. Then I was so worried about it. I actually went and started sneaking chapters when she wasn't there and in and, and reading on the sly because I was so eager to find out what would happen next. Luckily, she forgave me. Uh, but uh, that was, I always loved uh, that world and loved fantasy and science fiction and kept on going. So that was what I wanted to write. I knew I wanted to write something. And fantasy and science fiction seemed like the most reasonable thing. Ah, uh, there we go. That's right. The reasonable thing indeed. And if I'm not mistaken, like you actually loved it so much, you're actually able to get to the point where you actually write 2000 words a day. I do, and I emulate uh, a very good role model, Stephen King, in doing that, uh, because I figured Stephen King seems to know what he's doing, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I also, I, I try to write 2,000 words a day, but the reason that I'm able to do that is I don't promise myself it's going to be 2,000 words of genius or 2,000 just amazing words or anything like that. And I think that's one of the things that's important for writers uh, is, is to remember. You don't sit down and go, okay, I'm going to write 2,000 good words. You just sit down and go, I'm going to write 2,000 words. 
Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Definitely some motivation. I gave one of our past guests, Dwayne Jenkins, like he's a big Stephen King fan himself, and he loves like all like just about all of Stephen King's books, and he's like a big fan of them. So <laughs> it's so true. Like one of probably one of the most popular writers in all of writing, to be honest. Yeah. Well, and and he was also a model of perseverance. Although, you know, he wrote his first book and he kept trying and he kept trying. And actually he'd gotten to the point where he, you probably heard this story where he was going to throw it away and his wife talked him into sending it out one more time. And that was when it hit. So thank God for supportive spouses. Uh, yeah, you can see that again. Definitely going to need supportive spouses, or just supportive people in general. Yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. So, and speaking of support, what's probably been one of the biggest helps that really keeps you going with all of your creative work? Because you've written multiple books and you just keep cranking them out and you're able to create this business for yourself where you get to teach others all about writing. Well, uh, one of the things that's really kind of saved my productivity this year is actually through the school. I have been running uh, sessions every weekday where we just uh, all log into a Zoom call, much like this one. And we check in and say what we're doing. And then we all just go silent and work for 30 minutes and do that three times in a row. And the words start to end, add up. There's something about working with other people. I, I don't know, it just, it's motivating because everybody else is head down. And we also pledge to stay off Twitter while we're, <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's like, take the social media pledge, who's doing it? And and. Every once in a while, we go around to check-ins and somebody kind of sheepishly confesses, oh, I went on Twitter. It's hard not to, right? Yeah, like social media, like the way it's designed is just to keep you really out of the game. Like, yeah. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing the writing community is pretty huge on Twitter. Is that why Twitter was the social there's, media choice? There's a lot. Well, I mean, like, writers will find any way to procrastinate, right? I mean, you could lock a writer in, in a room with a typewriter and a bunch of paper and they'd be folding paper airplanes instead of <laughs> working, be like, oh God, I've got to get these paper airplanes done. But the thing is, you know, writers get this kind of half-assed notion where they're, where they're like, uh, I know that I have to be discoverable, right? I have to reach the readers. The readers have to be able to find me. And so a, a lot of the newer writers feel like they've got to immediately get on Twitter. But the thing is, you've got to have books to sell before you start doing that. But I do laugh sometimes because I can see fellow writers and they'll be like, okay, they seem to be tweeting a whole bunch. And I'll be like, I wonder if they've got a deadline. I wonder if there's, you know, what is it that they're procrastinating on right now? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's a ton of a ton of writers on on Twitter. There's a, and then there's fun. I mean, like one of the things about writers, I, they like to joke around with each other, and they like to do puns. They like to play games. They like to they like to show off how clever they are. And sometimes they're as clever as they think they are. And sometimes not. But they have a good time. Ah, there we go. There we go, indeed. There we go, indeed. Yeah, definitely a fan of puns. I, I torture people with puns on the daily. It's <laughs> we weapon of choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. But that is really something interesting and powerful. You drop there is a question of like, what are you procrastinating on? It's like maybe that might be the question that every writer and heck, even person that wants to take action in life is like, hey, what am I procrastinating on? And what, why am I letting social media, especially Twitter, like lock mm -hmm. me from finishing this thing? So what helps you to break through that procrastination trap? One of the things I do is in the morning when I get up, I write down three things that I want to try to get done that day. And I try not to make that one of those 20 item to do lists. I just it's three things. And like, here are the three things that I really, really want to make sure I get done. And that's very helpful. I, I think. The other thing about the writing is, again, not saying to myself, I'm going to make it perfect, that it's more important to do the thing than to worry about doing it perfectly, because you can, at least with writing, you can go back and make it perfect. Uh, and so doing is better than thinking about doing. <laughs> well, sometimes. 
most of the time. Uh, doing is better than thinking about doing. <laughs> There we go. That goes. Then he's going to t shirt or something. That's it. That's it. It's incredibly deep, Tom. We mean, we... <laughs> <laughs> she brought a shovel, y'all. Oh, that's, right. that's right. That's right. There you go. That's right. It has Rambo on the handle, too. <laughs> so now you got me to snort. That's good. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> but speaking of handles with a good handle on the writing, what would probably be your advice to someone new who may be thinking like, all right, I really want to write my fantasy novel and I'm coming up to this quote unquote writer's block here and they need help from an award-winning writer who has all this wonderful content out there and success. Like what probably would be something to help folks to really break through that? Well, I do have on my website a whole page that's called Resources for Fantasy and Science Fiction Writers uh, that might be useful to them. Another is the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America has a blog and a website uh, that is just jam-packed with useful stuff. And that website is sfwa.org. And I, you know, it... One of the things that I think a lot of people do is they go, oh, I'm going to write my novel as soon as I get all my ducks lined up in a row, or it's as soon as I get to the perfect place. And just as soon as this and that happens, I'll write the novel. And the answer to that is no, just go ahead and do it. Because life is all, you know, that's the moment where life is going to be like, hello, here's a pandemic, or hello, here's an aging parent, or, you know, there's always going to be some reason not to write. And so the important thing to do is, is just to go ahead and write. That's right. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, those two magical resources definitely got to put those in the show notes, because that's probably one of the biggest things that a lot of folks when they're writing it's like oh how do you get past writer's block that yeah. blinking cursor like i'm blinking more than the cursor how do i <laughs> make it stop <laughs> well and it's hard but we also we, we have this this notion of right the muse is going to come and inspire you and the writing's going to be easy and it's just going to be kind of like you stephen king's got the tommy knockers he's got the magic typewriter that just produces when you think at it and the problem is that's not going to happen uh writing is just freaking hard sometimes. And you can take that sort of muse approach and that's, that's a lovely leisurely somewhat privileged approach. Whereas if you wanna kind of make a living off writing, you gotta get up in the morning and go, maybe I don't feel like writing, but I'm gonna go write because very few truck drivers get up in the morning and say, boy, I don't feel like driving my truck today. I got truck driver's block. <laughs> so much for that, right? Uh, <laughs> it's true. Like, yeah, truck driver's block does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I mean, it's injury. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, and then it would be a nice world if, if like every time anybody was feeling kind of shitty, they could be like, well, I'm going to take a mental health day. Actually, that would be a much better world. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that unfortunately we're in this system where if you want to survive, you got to make money and you got to, you know, ugh, all of that crud. You got to deal with it sometimes. Yep. It's true. Indeed. It's true. Indeed. And in speaking of making money, another thing that a lot of writers need to understand is that the writing, even though it's hard, the real hard part is selling the book. So if there was one piece of advice you would give to someone who's new, who's probably just published their book or they're getting close to it, that's probably helped you to get past that, what would it be? I would say, write the book that you want to read and write the book that you're excited and happy to write. And the reason I say this is because I've seen so many people kind of try to write to market, right? They're trying to write the thing that will sell. And people, you can't predict that. But a couple of years ago, I was like, I, 
I have an agent and he's failed to sell anything in the New York scene. I know I keep bringing him books and he's like, oh, this is fabulous. And then he takes it around and he fails to sell it. And I, I'm sorry, Seth, if you're watching, uh, but this is what was happening. Uh, but I, so I was like, I'm going to write the kind of book I want to read. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to just write a book. I'm going to write it at blinding speed and I'm going to fill it full of the stuff that I want to see. And so I wrote this very silly space opera. Uh, and it's about a bunch of retired soldiers who establish a restaurant aboard a space station. And they're worried because this food critic's coming and then a mysterious package arrives and they end up, things start exploding and they steal an intelligent spaceship who doesn't really think it wants to be stolen and then launches off. And it was just, it was a blast to write, right? I was just having so much fun writing it. And I was like, I'm going to self-publish this, right? I, you know, I wrote it so fast. It, it can't be much good. And I took it to my agent. I was like, hey, dude, you got to sign off on this before I can self-publish it. And he was like, oh, hold on, Rambo. And I was like, no, you're going to take this book that I'm so happy about. And you're going to go and you're going to trot it around for two years. And I'm just going to be sad and depressed. And he said, no. And, and, and so a little back and forth there, as you can imagine, but I finally, I, I gave it to him and I'm super glad he did, uh, or that I did and that he took it because uh, six weeks later, I had a three book uh, deal with Tor McMillan uh, for a significant amount of money. And, and I honestly think it was because it I wrote the book that I wanted to write. I wrote the book that I was going to have fun with. And my story is not the only one like that I've heard. I keep hearing people write the book that they want to write. They write the book of their heart. And that's what does well, because that love comes through. That much joy comes through in the writing, I think. Hey, you're definitely right about that. Because it's so darn true. It's and it makes so much sense because there's the classic entrepreneur advice and entrepreneur space, like, yeah, do what you love and the money will yeah. follow. Yeah. Which there, there's some truth to that, and then there's also some non-truth to that. But still at the same <laughs> day, you might as well do something that you enjoy because if you're gonna yeah. sell a product, you gotta believe in the product. And like yourself, you wrote about something that in interested you and you yeah. enjoyed it. And it sounds like a pretty interesting story to say the least. <laughs> so like, that's one heck of a powerful story that folks need to keep in mind, because if you write the book that you want to write and write the book that you want to read, then it should, there'll be folks like you who would want to read it too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So since this is far from your first rodeo and you've been on both sides of the metaphorical fence of interviewing others and being interviewed, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often? Oh, God, I have asked this myself. <laughs> <laughs> and yet I am unprepared. A question that I am not often asked. I'm sorry, I've been doing so many podcasts lately that they have just sort of uh, been a slew of them. I guess one of the questions might be, uh, who do I regret not uh, having a chance to connect with in science fiction? Like who passed uh, before I sort of entered the scene? And there's so many wonderful uh, women writers uh, that I really would have loved to have had a chance to talk to uh, like Kit Reed and Carol M. Schwiller uh, and Kate Wilhelm. Uh, one of the people that I really wish I'd had more time with uh, was one of my teachers, uh, Octavia Butler, uh, mm. who, who died uh, just a year after uh, I'd had her class. Uh, and was just a, amazing, uh, Ursula Le Guin. And, and so the kind of the lesson <laughs> that I would like people to take from that is, you know, if, if there's somebody whose work you admire, you should feel free to tell them that, uh, you know, it doesn't, don't expect them to respond. Don't, you know, feel like they're obligated or anything like that, but don't be afraid to reach out to the creators that where the work is that you really loved and tell them that because honestly, that is what so many of us are waiting to hear. Uh, you know, certainly money's nice and certainly, you know, getting to talk on podcasts and all of that is, is wonderful. And it, it's fun because we get to meet new people. 
Um, but the thing that really is the most meaningful for me is, is when somebody writes and says, hey, I read your story and I cried, or mm -hmm. you know, in a good way as opposed to a bad way. Uh, but so, so reach out to people. And one of the things that's cool about the internet and in our today's age is so many of those writers are on Twitter or on social media, or you just track down their website and there's a contact form and you can say, I love, actually, I just did this recently. There was a, someone had given me a book when I was a child and it was a book about writing for kids. I've still got it uh, here on my shelf and I tracked down the writer and she's still alive. And I wrote to her through her website form and said, uh, I read your book so many times and you are one of the reasons why I won a Nebula. And uh, I just got the nicest letter back from her and I, it just delighted my heart. Uh, so. Ah, pop store right there. So don't be afraid to ask and let folks know it's like, hey, I love your work. And authors appreciate it. Trust me, like it, no matter how big they are, if they read it and you're honest about it, like they, you might get a response back and they'll be truly grateful for it because sometimes yeah. in the space, you feel like, man, I'm talking to a wall here. And well and I bet you get that. I mean, don't you feel happy when somebody writes in or, or contacts you and says, I listen to your podcast and you're getting me through the day. And I mean, it just, it makes such a difference. It does. It, it really does. does. It's like, come on here. It's like, make, make sh like, let someone know that we're not writing to ghosts or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, indeed. Even if they're space ghosts or holy ghosts. Like <laughs> 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 oh man but yes indeed powerful lesson well we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive and that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again but this time in 2020 with all of your knowledge and experience what advice would you give to yourself vote would be the first thing that i would say uh, actually i would say don't be afraid I, I i would say don't if i may might uh swear again just like give fewer fucks and, and nobody <laughs> nobody is looking at you as hard as you as they you think they're looking at you and it is more important to be happy than to worry about what people think of you sometimes there we go Bold i wish solid. i could tell my 25 self year old self that <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. It's so darn true. I'm like, just imagine, it's like, yeah, I got all this wisdom now. If I could just go yeah. back in time and tell them, hey, <laughs> buy a bunch of toilet paper. Well, actually, no, <laughs> like, avoid this person, that's avoid it. that that's person. It. Oh, God. Can you think of like several relationships who just be like, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, avoid them like the plague before oh, 2020. Yeah, Some people yeah. like to jump in this plague, but avoid the other plagues that other humans yeah. have avoided. Yeah. <laughs> it that's it oh man well, this has been fun on the bun so for those who want to continue the fun on the bun action with miss meow herself cat rambo what's the best way for folks to reach out to you uh you can find me at my website which is strangely enough catrambo.com or you can find me on twitter or facebook uh again strangely enough as cat rambo uh, and please check out the school, particularly if you're interested in writing. We've got a lot of really interesting classes uh, coming up in the next couple of months. There you go. There you go. Make sure you leave a virtual apple on her desk. I'm sure there's a contact page where you can contact Cat <laughs> indeed. And she might even send you back a cat dressed up in camouflage with an M4. You never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I only thought of that at least once. Come on, well, at least somebody, <laughs> somebody, I wish I had it handy. Somebody did a picture of a cat, a, a Rambo cat for me. And it is a kind of like, it's a calico cat and he's got a gun and a, <laughs> a bandana. And it's really cute. <laughs> That's right. I got nine lives and lost one of them. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, it, it, there's worse spirit animals than, than a Rambo cat, right? So. Oh yeah, there you go. The Rambo Cougars, maybe. That's it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the other cat. <laughs> the other cat, there you go. 
the bigger cat. <laughs> the the, the bigger. Lions. Oh, there we go. The mountain yeah. lions. Another bigger meow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, there you have it, folks. Head over to catrambo.com, folks. Catrambo.com. Check out all of her wonderful wares. Buy some magical copies of all of her magical books and share them with your friends. And heck, if you got a cat that likes to read books, share it with that cat too, since they like to claim territory. They might as well claim a wonderful book indeed. So any parting words before we close up shop, cat? I, I just stay happy, everybody. I know it's uh, kind of odd right now. And I think more than ever, uh, stay happy and be of good heart. We will get through 2020. This is your host, Dom Brightman. Hope you enjoyed what you just heard. And if you really did, do me a solid and leave a review if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, on YouTube, wherever you're listening to. And subscribe to hear more because more is coming your way to advance you further than before.